Panther Music Show. It's the Murder Panther Music Show. Fred. It's the Murder Master Music Man Show. J. It's the Murder Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Man Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. It's the Murder Master Music Show. It's the murder master they used to say Hip hop is dead, but we don't resurrect it You follow what mainstream says, but here it gets rejected If you wearing tight jeans, don't expect to get respected I'm from a time where wearing black was always on your checklist From a time where faggots get checked if they reckless From a time where if you got too much shine, we snatch your necklace This real shit here, Illuminati, fuck the industry We represent the street and they respect our street ministries Hate no shorts and cut the middleman, literally this Hip-hop savior, our birth scenes like nativity This is a place where no one sells out for relevability And the masses can get a chance to explore more creativity You gotta be kidding me If you call that hip-hop Niggas with my stays and fluorescent flip-flop We kill a big brother Cause we know he watch You don't like what I'm doing Then you can suck mine Oh, uh, and it's you the don't die It's the Murder Master Music Show It's the Murder Master Music Show it's the Murder Master Music Show. 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 What's up, everybody? Episode 333, you know what I'm saying? Triple three, what a number, you know what I'm saying? Hard to believe we're here already. Uh, we got a hell of a show tonight. We got Cedric Singleton, CEO of Black Market Records. Um, man, tons of music, you know what I'm saying? Not only from the underground, but also, I mean, these guys, they hit the charts. They got plaques, you know what I'm saying, on major uh, uh, releases. You know what I'm saying? They're still doing it big. Real fucking big. They just dropped a new Outlaws album, Living Legends. Yeah, I'm going to bring on the CEO of Black Market Records right now, Cedric Singleton himself. How you doing, Cedric? Hey, what it is? What's up? What's up? Man, man. first and foremost, welcome to the Murder Master Music Show. This episode 333. Huge honor to have you on the show, man. How, how you been? I've been good, man. Thanks for the invite. And it's it's a huge honor. Uh, you know, you've done so much, you know what I'm saying, throughout your career, um, and you're still doing it, man. What keeps you doing it after all these years? Uh, I mean, I just love I love the art, the art, the creative, the art side of, of this business. I like, you know, one of the things that gives me the greatest uh, satisfaction is turning uh, nothing into something, trying to, you know, make, you know, trying to make things happen and just the uh, the whole creative aspect of it, being in the music, making films, um, concerts, and all that stuff. It's just, it's just, I just enjoy what I do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And you just dropped a, um, a new Outlaws project, uh, you know, Living Legends, right? Yes, can, uh, can you tell us about that and how all that came to light? It's a Living Legends album with, um, with, the, with the Outlaws, man. It was, it was my honor that they wanted to put a record out with me. And so we, um, you know, we we talked about it, and then we did, we made it happen. And you know, just it was a legend, just that those guys wanted to wanted to deal with the black with the market. Yeah, yeah, man, that's huge. That, that, that right there speaks volumes. You know, what I'm saying from one of the one of the dopest groups of rap history. They know your history. That's the thing, man. They know what you have done. That's got to make you feel good at the end of the day, knowing that you know you, you really accomplished a lot. Yeah, man. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a great privilege man, to, um, for people to recognize, you know, our our, our little label in Sacramento, California, uh, from people from all over the world. Um, this this year, coming moving forward, we'll be working with a lot of um, national acts, a lot of pretty large, a pretty large artists, uh, from uh, DJ Khalid to a couple other artists, and just it's just it's just getting real exciting. Well, that's what I was saying earlier. You're tackling all different levels of the game, you know what I'm saying, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, major stuff or whether it's independent, you're hitting it from every angle. Um, let's let's take our listeners back. So uh, when did Black Market Records first start, Cedric? Uh, 
about 1989 it was. Um, I did a record with an artist, local artist in Sacramento by the name of Homicide. And my at the time, my uh, studio, I was a producing producer at the time, and my studio was called Black Market Studios, Black Market Productions. And um, that's when it got started, 89. 89, and the guy's name was Homicide. What kind of music yeah. was he doing um was it like a real hardcore gangster, or was it? Yeah, yeah I mean, it was. It was very some was, inch or, or, or X-rated, or was it something different? No, the homicide stuff was gangster stuff. It was gangster music, uh, but X-rated and Brother Lynch came along later, and their music was just harder gangster. Uh, and there was a little extra edge on uh, Lynch and, and rated and Mr. Doctor and some of the artists that I've done since Homicide. But Homicide at the time um, was was gangster. But just not as hard as the other guys. Well, well, and so you've been in this since the eighties. Here we are. It's, it's twenty seventeen. You're still doing stuff. Um, you're also doing film film work. Uh, what do you got uh, going uh, as far as film? Man, I got um, got a couple of films. We just finished one called Our Apartment. We're about to get started um, working with uh, Dion Taylor for his. Uh, you know, he's done. He did the. Um, Meet the Blacks. So we're doing the soundtrack for Meet the Blacks on his next film, and we're also doing a soundtrack for his a film that he directed that starring starring Jamie Foxx uh, called Stranded. So it's two uh, soundtracks that we're working on. Film wise, I've just been on the phone with um, Tretch uh, not, uh, from Naughty by Nature, Method Man, Mike Epps, and um, Ice T. Um, Taraji just came in and signed on to uh, an eight-part series called Southside, which features the uh, drug kingpin from the Queens called Supreme. Really excited about that. Really excited about that that project. Wow. Wow. I mean, you're really doing a little bit of everything. Um, Man, that's amazing. When does that come out? Well, we're, we're we're about to go into production in about another three months. We're still trying to put all the details together on the project. We just started our conversation um, actually last week. Um, they sent sent me over what they had so far. Man, it's just exciting to be. I mean, even for those guys to be looking for the market because you know they 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 you know they got in contact with us, and that was um, you know a, a, a great a great thing in, in my opinion that these guys would be looking looking for us in Sacramento. Yeah, that, that yeah, story. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that's great. Good to hear. It's good to see. You know, what I'm saying it's good to see this. Uh, didn't you also? Uh, didn't uh, you also sign X-rated uh, for for a deal? Um, yeah, me X-rated. Well? Um, yeah, me and X-rated uh, got got back together about eight nine months ago, and with his next few records, he'll be dropping on black market. Wow. That is, that, uh, man, I really like that because, you know what I'm saying, the, the history that you guys have goes back, you know what I'm saying, to the early 90s, man. What, what was it like, you know what I'm saying, meeting X-Rated? Can you describe him back in those early days? You know, the the, the thing is that with X-Rated, I knew X-Rated about a week before uh, the crime that he was involved in happened. I only knew him for a week, and... Um, I produced a song, the last song on the album, Psychoactive, and then um, I, I mixed the song on a Friday, and this crime happened. That now I mixed, the, I mixed, I mixed the song on a Saturday morning, and this crime happened Saturday night. That mm. Monday, he was on the run. I didn't yeah. I, at the time. I didn't know any anything that had happened. But when he when they called him, he called me and said they caught me, and I was like, "Caught you for what?" And then he, then you know, then I put two and two together. But, but since he's been in jail, I mean, he our relationship uh, has blossomed from the time that he's been in jail. Because I, like I said, at the time I didn't really know him. Um, he his first visitor when he was in jail, he said, well, "Come and visit me." He was, you know, at the time he was sixteen, and so he said, "Come and visit me." And, and I said, "How am I gonna come visit?" He said, "Just tell him that you're my dad." Okay, so I went down there and lied to him, <laughs> told him I was his dad. And, I, and, and then we sat there and we talked about it. But, you know, we had been, you know, really close. Our relationship with X-Rated is, is beyond the music. Um, I have great admiration for him, and I, and I have even more admiration for him now for how much he's developed as a person. 
Yeah. I'm looking for, um, for, for for some really great things for that guy when he gets out. I was yeah, going to say I, I have, his discography mm-hmm. is amazing considering he's been locked down um, his whole career pretty much. Imagine how effective he can be on the outside. Think about it. How many rec- there are guys out here running around free can't put a record out. This guy has been in the penitentiary for 25 years. And look at the yeah. record that he's been able to put out with all of those opticals in front of him. Yeah. And I didn't help him with all of them. I put six records out on Rated. He put out some other records without my help. Yeah. Yeah, he put out a lot. Uh, yeah, on his own, too. Yeah, that's that's true. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to X Rated. Hopefully, he comes home soon. Is there any details on when he might be coming home? He had a um, uh, he had a um, what was it a parole hearing uh, about uh, I think it was in May of last year. They denied him parole. Um, they did not expect him to get the, into his parole hearing and, and say what he said at the time. Me and him had not talked for ten years, but shortly after that, uh, we um, uh, regained communication. And um, so he told me basically what had happened at the, at the um, parole hearing. I'm just expecting them to say yes next time because they expected him to get get um, to, to get come into the parole hearing and deny what he had been accused of. But instead he came to the parole hearing and told the absolute truth as yeah. to what happened that night. And I think that put people back. He apologized, and it wasn't anything that, um, you know, that was done out of an act. He said he, he accepted full responsibility by stating something like, we went to that house to kill somebody. This is what yeah. he's saying in his parole hearing. He said, now, at this point in my life, I'm a different person now. But that's 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 what happened at his parole hearing. They did not hide him, and he'll be back before the parole board again in May. Uh, well, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you know, he touches down on the streets uh, soon. Uh, real good dude. I've had the, the pleasure not only to interview him, but also co- uh, he was one of my uh, um, you know co-writers at Murder Dog Magazine. He had a column oh, in right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Very so, uh, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Real good dude. Real good dude, man. Shout out to X-Rated. We look forward to um, you know him coming home, but what's the first project he's going to be dropping on Black Market? He has a he has so many different projects up his sleeve, but I think in his next project he's going to kill X rated off. It's a, a um, he's going to kill he's going to kill the X rated off, and the album going forward will be on Ray Brown. Wow, wow! So this next album he's going to put X rated to rest. You know what I'm saying yeah. in a sense, um, and he's going to go by his real name. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's amazing. You know what? Uh, you know, I, I wish we we had him on the. You know, I've been writing to him and chopping up with him uh, uh, over the years. I haven't talked to him in a while, but uh, I'd love to have him on the phone. But did, did he explain to you why he's going to be uh, doing that? He did, the development here. He told me, he said, "I can't rap about the same thing um, now." Twenty five years. What is he? Forty one now. I can't rap about the same thing at forty one that I rapped about when I was sixteen. So. That development in in me as a person, I am a different person now. So that whole image of X-rated, hit, he needs to be put to rest. Yeah, man, that's huge. That's that's huge news right there. Anybody that uh, fan of X-rated, uh, man, support him in this next journey, in this next phase. You know, what I'm saying that's dope. That's dope. I respect that though, man. It's it, you know what it is. It's growth. Yeah, that's what it is. It's growth, and uh, that's dope. Oh, yeah. I, I I had read an interview with X Rated. I think it was dated 2013. I can't mm-hmm. I can't remember what what the interview was, but he had nothing but good things to say about about you, Cedric. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he said that he, he's forever forever grateful for the opportunity you gave him, and he will forever be loyal to you. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. You guys have linked back up. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, the one thing about that dude, man, that dude tells the truth. He, t- he tells yeah. the truth, 
And, you know, a lot of these artists lie in, in, in music, and in, 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 they lie in real life. Lie in music, you lie in real life. And Trey tells the truth. Yeah. He tells the truth in his music, and he tells the truth in real life. Or well, I guess you call that keeping it real? I guess, you know, that's why his fans, you know what I'm saying, really love to do, man, and, and want to see, you know, him out of there and, and home with his family. You know, people are pulling for him. And, you know, you can tell he's a, he's a humble dude. He's a he's a good dude, man. So uh, nothing yeah. but good things to him in the future. He's writing sure. a book about his life, man. And, you know, I, as close of a witness as I've been to his life, I can't wait to read his book. Yeah, I think yeah, he's going to be an that's amazing be a movie eventually. An someday. amazing, an amazing story. I mean, uh, an amazing story. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's good that's to see that you, like Brandon was saying. It's good to see you guys after all these years. You know, what I'm saying all the success, the highs, the lows. You're still comrades. You're still doing things together. So that, it speaks volumes too that he signed. He signed back with you. Um, uh, about you and uh, the integrity of Black Market Records, you know what I'm saying, um, which is a, is a huge label on the West Coast. Do you feel, though, that sometimes you don't get the props you deserve for what you guys contributed? You know what I'm saying? All you guys, you know, Doomsday Productions, Lynch, uh, Mr. Doctor, X-Rated, and, of course, yourself, do you feel that you guys don't get the props sometimes? I think that's a, <clears throat> that's a geological, I mean, a, ge- a geography issue. Because we are in Northern California, and it's in a secondary market. Even though our influence upon major artists have, uh, you know, X-rated, I mean, not X-rated, but Brother Lynch's influence on Eminem, his influence on Snoop Dogg. And Snoop Dogg told me one time, he said that when he did Doggy Style, he had recorded it in an entirely different album, and then he heard Brother Lynch hung. He heard Brother Lynch hung and went back and recorded another album, which is the Doggy Style we heard. Talk to anybody in Detroit, Michigan. They will tell you, anybody that's familiar with the music in Detroit area, that M- or, or Eminem, he said his favorite rapper is Brother Lynch. So there is a, a, an acknowledgement that happens on for those people who are aware, but for the general public, not so much, because for the, the truth be told, we really have not done those monster records. We have done those niche-type records that have done well, pleasing of the sickness, I uh, went platinum a couple of years ago, but it took 20 years to do it. Yeah, it initially went gold, I believe, real quick, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that's a classic <laughs> album. But the uh, you mean 24? So, so Snoop had recorded. I, I, I want to go back a minute. It said Snoop had recorded Doggy Style or, 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 or a different version of Doggy Style. Then he heard 24 Deep and said, yeah. "Fuck that! I gotta go do a new version." Right. That's what he told you. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's dope. That's yeah. So there's acknowledgement from those people who are aware of the music. I mean, Brother Lynch Hung is, uh, I think he's one of the, I don't think Brother Lynch Hung has gotten the uh, credit or, or the respect for his talent by the general public. So yeah. that guy was I mean, he still, I mean, if you go back and listen to uh, Season of the Sickness, sometimes I play that stuff for people who have never heard of Brother Lynch. And they are still impressed by him. Yeah. It makes you yeah, wonder, you know, how can they not be? You know, must not have we a, had, a we had Gangster Nip on here. We just had Gangster Nip on here like two weeks ago, and mm-hmm. he was mm-hmm. saying the same thing. He was, he was saying the same exact thing that, that him, Brother Lynch, and Eshawn, like that, that, that he felt that those three should be considered pioneers. You know what I mean? It, it, it was good to hear him show that love to Brother Lynch. Wow. Yeah, that's an incredible thing. We we had, we put a record out with um with, with Gangsta Gangsta Nip also. We put a re- we did a record with him yeah. about five six years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you put out music with uh. Lots of people. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about Lynch. You know, uh, you got X-rated with it. Uh, what about like Lynch and Doomsday Productions? Uh, any talks of working with them in the future? I would love to. With those guys, you know, I had actually I went to, I went to jail in Las Vegas on a gun charge, like back in the '90s, I think it was, right? 
And um, those dudes, those dudes stood by my side through that whole experience. Dudes, they productive. Them dudes are my brothers. And so I would love, I don't know what exactly they're doing. I don't think they've recorded anything lately, but, you know, I'm going to reach out to those guys and see if I can get them back in the studio. Yeah, they, I'm telling you, man, I was reviewing some of their albums in the Murder Dog, and they, they uh, oh, yeah, that shit was fire. You know what I'm saying? Playboy 7, all them guys, man. Um, one of the best trios, I think, in, in rap history, you know. They didn't get um, the, They did not get the respect. Um, I, I know that they didn't. They didn't. They they kind of flew under the ra- radar. I put I yeah. put their first album out, but all of the records subsequently they all put out themselves. And um and um, but I I don't think that they got the the, the respect or the acknowledgement that they deserve. Yeah, yeah, that's real talk. No, they did it. They did it. That's for sure. Um. Now, Lynch, uh, I believe he left Strange not too long ago. We had him on the show last year. He put mm-hmm. out a, a, a project on his own label. You and him talked about possibly doing stuff together. I saw him yeah, holding always, up I always black. talked to um, Actually, I kind of talked. It was X Radio who kind of had broached the subject of them doing a record together, which I thought would have been incredible. But Lynch is kind of one day he's one way, next day he's in, he's he's filming a different way. And so it's kind of hard to... to um, to um, to get something done like that, and um, yeah. yeah, but I I would I, I I'm a big Lynch fan, so I always love to put a record out with Lynch. But just when I thought when times that we talked about, it, he called me and said, "Let's do a record together." And I did. I my next question is, "How much is that going to cost me?" And the number is crazy. <laughs> I was like, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, you know, I, well, it would be dope to see uh, like a black market. Reunion with all them guys, or, or like a tour. Did you guys ever talk about doing something like that? I think that would be when, when, when Rady gets out of jail, that's the first thing that he wants to do. When he comes home, that's the first thing that he wants to do, and I think he's going to kill it. Imagine all that yeah. time pent up wanting to do something, and you get the opportunity to do it. Oh, man. Yeah, that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. I'd like to welcome my uh, uh, co host, Mac J. He's on the line right now. How you doing, Mac J? Here What's up with the prayer? Yeah, What's man, I, I've been listening. I've been listening for for a while, man. But you know, it, it's icy out here, man. So we trying to. Just, I, I had to take it slow getting to the crib tonight. <laughs> but I just want to salute uh, Cedric on everything they've been doing, man. This dope interview, man. Good history, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah, man. He's got uh, and I and I want to remind everybody. Go pick up that new Outlaws album. You know what I'm saying? Living Legends, available right now. You got anything else that's out uh, right now people can go pick up, Cedric? I got, I got, man, I got a lot of music about to drop. I got a Kunta album, um, Death of Full Betrayal. I just dropped that. I got the Jay Stalin. I should have stayed in school. I'm dropping Filthy Rich. Um, um, royalty. Um, I got a Filthy Rich album coming. I have a, a D-Lo album dropping on the 28th, a Maserati Ricky on the 27th, a Nani Blanco on the 14th of February, a Trey Solid on the, um, I think, the, the last week of February, a Lil Darion on the first week of March. A lot of music. A lot of music. Coming. Man. Man. <laughs> wow. Cranking them motherfuckers oh, out. Is it, I mean, where, where do you keep your clones? <laughs> you know, I mean, what the hell do you? I mean, how the hell do you balance all this stuff, man? Now I got a staff, man. My staff is pretty. I got, you know, I got a pretty good staff, and um, and and it's kind of like, you know, there's a competition that goes on within the label, which I absolutely love it. Where you know, one group is trying to outdo the next group on a project, and that's exactly the environment mm-hmm. that um, that. Um, I foster intentionally, and it, it's something that everybody involved loves. Because at the end of the day, um, we we're all we, we we all win. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody reaching for greatness, like pushing each other up in their yeah, game, yeah. stepping the bar up. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing wrong with that uh, uh, good competitive nature. That's what this hip hop shit's supposed to be. Always, anyway, it's always that goal to get better. Than what you was, or at least if you ain't the best, they gon' they gonna mention me with the best. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. 
That's what the game be missing. But I'm glad y'all still doing that shit like that. Yeah, man, I'm still excited, though. There was a time when it got stale for me a few years back, but I got that fight back in me. I got that love, that love for what what I do. Uh, it came back. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I just actually enjoy getting up in the morning and going to work. Yeah. Well, what's it what's it like working with Jay Stalin? That 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 dude's incredible, man. Somebody put me on to him a while back, man. I, I've been stuck on him ever since. That dude's incredible. I just got off the phone with him, and we talked about doing another album together. Um, the incredible, talented guy, man. Here's another guy that I think is a national star. Jay Stalin is yeah, an incredible. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that dude should be everywhere. I think everybody should know who he is. Like, I think he's as good as the next guy. Like, he, he, that dude is amazing. Once I heard like two songs, I got stuck. I looked up everything, everything I could find on him. He, he should be everywhere, man. Yeah, he's got tons Real, of music out there. Solid dude, man. He just he works and works and works. He got a great head on his shoulders. I think one something that also happens in Northern California is that. It's such an independent environment that mm-hmm. everybody wants to be independent. And that same thing that has fostered this environment is also the thing that hurts this environment because mm-hmm. these guys, a lot of these independent guys are limited based on the fact that they're independent, but they're able to get out and control their situation. But that, that control of your situation comes at a cost. And that is your effectiveness and your ability to market to a broader marketplace, your ability to cover all of the bases. Like we have with your majors, you have an entire, you know, you go to to some of these major companies, they got 100 people in there working. So how can you compete with that and you're one person with your home Right. You can't compete with that. uh, Yeah, it's extremely hard. Even in the podcast world, you've got – Oh, yeah. Popping up with a podcast every other day, um, just like rappers now. I'll take some dude with a mic, a uh, computer program, and a SoundCloud page, and he's a rap star, or he could right, potentially right. be a rap star, or YouTube, of mm-hmm. course. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's it's a whole different ball game than when it, when you first dropped in '89, man. What was it like for you to see that transition going from selling? you know, music independently out of stores and stuff like that, the the computer taking over and all that. You know, uh, you know, initially there were fewer people doing this thing in, in the, in when I got started because it took so much money to make a record. There weren't the home studios like that. You know, I had one. Everybody just did not um, make that type of an investment. And so it was a lot mm-hmm. harder to get records out. But as the ease of creating music, Happen, the more music begins to appear. The, the, with the, it, the well, I guess they say uh, Apple changed the entire music industry by making MP3. Yes, they did. They changed the entire landscape. That mm. now the fact of digital music made it uh, more affordable for people to produce music. Now, for what yeah. we were doing back then, I remember when we, when we um, put out Season of the Sickness. We had a, a tractor trailer pulled up in front of our office, and the, you know, a forty foot tractor trailer. It was full of CDs, and now I haven't ordered that many CDs in a very, very long time. A tractor trailer. Uh, it probably, I think we had like fifty thousand CDs on on, on mm-hmm. season of the sickness, and the only reason why we didn't put that album out ourselves is because a plant in Indiana, in, in somewhere in Indiana that was making our cassette tapes at the time, heard the content of Season of the Sickness, and they refused to make the set, cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't find another company that would make those cassette tapes, because they were all, cassettes were already on their way out at that time. Um, so it was right. the plants who were making them. So I went to Priority Records, and because of that reason, and I did a deal with them, and they had it a plant that would make the, the cassette thing. Then I, I ended up doing a deal with Priority, and Season of the Sickness came out on uh, Priority. But the transition from those CDs to the digital thing has been, I mean, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a, a tough adjustment that needed to be made. Either you make the adjustment or, you're, you, or you die as a company. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's gonna yeah, be a, it's gonna talk. be another uh, now everything going from the MP3 straight to just streaming. So right, you know they count sales on streams and uh, shit like that. But it's almost all the music transcended like that. You went from the records to the to the uh, eight tracks to the tapes to the forty fives to the CDs to the MP3s, the iPods, and now everybody's just gonna be straight streaming, paying for services to see multiple content, do you think some of your content and some of your publishing to get lost in the next change of the way people start listening to music? The, the music industry has been a, um, uh, have been, they have been working really hard at trying to increase the revenues earned by artists based on mm-hmm. streaming. So that's just the next evolution where people, but I think it also creates a, 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 a different relationship with music. Like when you know, back in the day when I would buy a, a record, you know, I was invested in that record. That record, I might if I listen to a couple songs on there, I don't like it. I might keep listening to it, and it might it may grow on me over time. So my relationship with my music is different when I actually own mm-hmm. the music. But when I stream the music, my relationship to those songs are different because I mm-hmm. don't own that. Right. My investment that physical is in the copy. service. It, yeah, yeah, my exactly. investment is in the service and not so much in the music. I think it changes the relationship that people have with their music. Mm, yeah, you're right. Because I still love getting hard copies and, and shit like that. I love the artwork. I like to look at, I like to read the linear notes and all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. a lost part of the art form, too. Because I bought albums just because of how they look sometimes. Mm-hmm. And more and, times and, than none, it was what I expected by what I seen. Right. I expected what I was hearing just by looking at the artwork. That's right. That's right. And I came up in the, you know, in, it, it, back when I would buy the actual album on wax. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember I grew up in uh, Columbus, Ohio. When I moved to California, uh, I drove in my car. The only thing I took with me was some clothes. And all my records. I, mean, I had a, 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 a Trans Am, you know, with you know, pretty much just two seats at the front, and little baby seats in the back, mm-hmm. back in the car, trunk full of records. <laughs> all the way from Ohio to California, huh? How many yeah, days right. is that? Two, three days on the road. Uh, two, we days. broke down about in Nebraska. Car broke down, so that took that added another couple of days. But it, if you were to drive <laughs> right to, straight through, two, two, three days at the most. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Cedric, hey, hey, I was wondering, uh, you've been in contact with C Murder or Master P. Uh, you, you worked with True before, didn't you? Yeah, I worked with, uh, yeah, I put uh, Master P's first album out. I put out, it's the first record he ever did, I put it out. Um, it was called Who's the Killer? It was True, Master P, and, and, and all of his brothers. I never really knew C Murder. I just had, you know have a, had a strong relationship with P. I, I never I never met C Murder. I know they 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 haven't been, they haven't spoken in a long time. But um, yeah. the last time I talked to P, probably about five years ago now though. Okay, yeah, I, I, I just had a start. I'm like I'm pretty sure he worked with Master P or C Murder or True or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, you're, you're it. I looked at all the people you you worked with, man. You were so many people. Um, what, what can you tell us about Big Lurch? What was it like to be around a dude like that, man? Oh, you know, Big Lurch. Big Lurch. Um, I didn't even know Big Lurch had rapped at the, when I first met him. He was just, a, you know, he's about six, seven. He's a big old tall guy that used to come to my come to my office with Rick Rock, and they had a, a group at the time. They were working with Mike Mosey. Mike Mosey's like my brother too. Um, uh, he used to come to my office. He would bring Rick Rock and he would bring Big Lurch. I didn't um, uh, do a deal with Lurch. He was already in jail when I did the deal with him. He had, the crime that he had committed had already happened, and um, nobody else would put his record out. So, of course, I don't have a problem with controversy. And um, so he uh, brought the record over to me, and I put the record out. My relationship, again, with Big Lurch has been something that has evolved since he's been in jail. Now, even though me and him share the same last name, his last name is Singleton, my last name is Singleton, 
Um, I actually, he just, I haven't gone to, I haven't, go, go, I will be going to see him probably in the next three or four months as soon as he puts me on his, his visitors list. He, he's here in Sacramento at, at New Folsom. And, um, yeah, so my relationship again with him is something that has developed since he's been in prison. Wow. And he yeah, is a that, guy who great. is, he is a guy who is, um, who, when he, when, he is a guy who is a, a strong proponent that is anti drugs. Anti is the things that cause him to be where he where he is. And um that's the, he has been preaching the same thing from um the minute he went to jail to now. We when we talked to Lurch, it's like he um didn't even know what had happened. He said he woke up, he was in jail. Oh uh yeah. I saw he um, he was speaking out against uh, you know what I'm saying PCP and, and things of that nature, um, but yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty amazing that he is, is doing what he's doing now, man. It's almost like he's he's wanting to give back. You know what I mean? He knows what he did was wrong, but he don't know how it happened because of the drugs. So he's wanting to prevent right. other people from doing the same thing. Um, I, which is which is a good thing. Is he? Uh, I mean, they got him for life. Does he have any chance at all of getting out? Well, it's a thing where he's um, going back and forth to parole. When, I think when X-rated had originally got arrested too, he was 31 years of life. But uh, due to a series of appeals, we got the life taken off. And so I'm ex- expecting the same type of thing for for Big Lurch. I mean, he has been consistently. Uh, he has been consistently pushing the message of anti PCP, anti drug. Yeah. Look at me. Look at what it it did to my life. And he, it has been a it, it has not it was not a a, a season thing. It's been for his entire time he has been in jail. Yeah. He uh, uh yeah oh yeah definitely you know what I'm saying uh, shout out to Big Lurch you know what I'm saying and uh. You know he he's uh, he feels remorse for what he did because, like you said, he don't even know what he did. When you're on PCP, um, imagine it takes away all the senses. You know, what I'm saying to the point to where, uh, yeah, you don't know what the hell you're doing. Um, so uh, hopefully, hopefully he gets uh, he gets out. Sounds like he can help a lot of people if he has yeah, the opportunity. I mean, his, his life is his testimony. Yeah. I mean, his life is his testimony. It's it's incredible. You know, you know, it was amazing to me. Like uh, another thing associated with, with Lurch is how the victim's family had has forgiven him. They forgave him many years ago for what uh, what had, had transpired to their family member. And I thought that was um, something that was uh, an incredible thing. That it was a rapid forgiveness. Yeah, that's, that's you. And and a lot of credit goes to you, man, for sticking with these guys. Uh, I know when it, whenever I read that interview with X-Rated, he made that clear that you, every time he wrote you, you wrote back, visited, you, he needed money to go somewhere, it got there. And, and he, he was very appreciative of that. And as someone that's been there before, I mean, that stuff means a lot. You know what I mean? So shout out to you for sticking with those guys, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A lot of people would have gave up on that. You know what I mean? A lot of people would have just been like, oh, well, that that's over with. So, you know, that, that, yeah. that, you should believe in those guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just a loyal dude by nature, man. I'm with you through thick and thin, and, um, and that's just who I am as a person. It has nothing to do with this business. That's just who I am. Yeah, and I think that's why you're a successful business man because you, you you build relationships with these people, man. They they know who you are. You're you're a real dude. So I think that's why people come to you with with stuff, man. You talked about the the new thing about Supreme, how they brought that to you. I think that's why people want to work with, man, because you're you're a real dude. You're very loyal. Yeah, it's kind of funny though. I uh, was uh, talking to a guy about the Supreme uh, situation. I asked him, did did he know we had, we were having lunch today? A guy here in Sacramento named B. Smooth, and he said, "Y'all know who Supreme is?" He said, "He signed me to my first record deal." <laughs> I was like, "Really?" <laughs> I was like, 
Yeah, it's like what a small world. Yeah, supreme. It, it, the supreme team, man. Yeah, I, I know all about that, man. That, that's great that that, that story is being told. I'm excited to tell for that. Man. I, I know, I know that whole story. I can't, I can't wait to see that, man. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. The, the trailer thing, man, was absolutely amazing. Uh, if you send me, send me your email. I'll send you over a little sizzle thing that they have for the uh, for the series, so you can put your eyeballs on it. Yeah, I, I need. Oh yeah. I know, I know well, all that, all that New York street stuff, man. Like you know, Supreme and Prince and all that, man. I think you know, the E Money bag. Oh, oh, the E Money bag was the Queen too. I know all those guys. Wow. So I'm, I'm excited to hear that story be told, man. You know, they're about to start working on uh, New Jack City, too. Mm. Wow. Uh, wow. How are they going to do that? That's gonna, I, I'm just trying to figure out how the hell they're going to do that because that, that's, the same that's one of those today, movies. That's the same thing you ask. Every time I say that, I, you know, I just found out a couple of days ago that the guy Douglas McHing, McHenry, it was um, Douglas McHenry and uh, George Jackson who put who did that movie. They also did The House Parties 1, 2, 3. They did Jason's Lyric. They did Thin Line Between Love and Hate. They did all of those films. You know, there was a series of, of, of black films that were coming out. That was all those two guys, George Jackson and Doug McHenry. But George Jackson died about 12 years ago now. And and and, um, and 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 Douglas McHenry has been working on other things. He worked on films like Stalingrad, but he's getting back. And he has a couple of meetings coming up in the next few days about doing New Jack City too. Did you know how much money New Jack City earned? It just blew me away. Yeah, to it had it been astronomical. Um, One point five billion dollars. Wow. That's that's crazy. crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, I remember when it came out, man. I remember, uh, you know, the movie theater, it was, it was real fucking, people were getting amped up for it, and, you know, same thing with Boys in the Hood, but New Jack City, you know, that was, that kicked it off. Yeah. It's always on TV. I mean, the, uh, you know, I, I, was, I walked past it on TV the other day. New yeah. Jack City. It's all the time. Yeah, it grossed. It grossed in the states alone. It grossed forty-seven um, million. Uh, in the theaters. Yeah, worldwide, and and, and the budget was only eight point five million. So I mean, it did phenomenal in the United States alone. Then worldwide, um, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah, that movie raked in the money definitely, definitely. But Cedric, I tell you what, it's been a hell of an interview, man. Um, uh, I want to uh, make sure before you go, uh, we give all the websites, all your social media, so people could uh, check you out and buy the music. Okay, you'll find, you you'll, find, you'll find us at Black Market 247 across all your platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You'll find me at Sid Singh at everything, um, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, all, all of those. Um, but just Black Market Records, you find us in blackmarketrecords.com, blackmarketrecords247.com, all that. Man, much appreciated. I want to thank you once again for coming on the show, uh, and you're welcome anytime to promote whatever. Um, we also hope to have the Outlaws come on the show. We had E.D. on the show before. Shout out to him. Shout out to uh, everybody at Black Market, man. Keep doing your thing. I really appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you fellas, man. Good luck with what you're doing. And uh, wishing you guys great success. And thank you very interview. much, man. Yeah, great interview, man. Thanks a lot. And thank you, thank you. All right, bye bye. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, what I'm saying you, you can't get more professional than that. That's the only Cedric Singleton Black Market Records. Make sure uh, you go out there and you cop that new Outlaws album. You know, what I'm saying Living Legends available right now. And stay tuned to what they're doing. They got a lot of other stuff coming up. Not just music, film, you know, pretty much, uh, he's pretty much got his hands in a little bit of everything, man. So shout out to him. Also, X rated. Look out for him. He's got a project coming up. And then he's going to be dropping albums under his real name, Honoré Brown, man. That's dope. It's dope to hear that because, uh, 
it, it sounds like a new chapter in in, in the evolution of X-rated. It's going to be uh, it's going to be good to hear. I look forward to that. Um, Without a doubt. Without a doubt. That that story about Queen, about Supreme, and that that's great. And that story needs to be told. So people don't yeah. know about about Supreme is man. He had the Supreme team like Fifty Cent when he was a drug dealer and everything. That like that's the the crew he was with. And Supreme was. I mean, he he ran Queens. And yeah. So that's yeah, and, yeah, oh yeah, definitely, man. And, and, and you know, another thing I was really uh, happy to hear too about the Doggy Style. He scrapped that uh, that whole album after Herb Lynch, so that could mean there's a, there's a whole different Doggy Style album out there somewhere that we ain't heard yet. That's kind of like uh, when Dude told us that there was a briefcase of Easy E tracks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, um, Man, and, and and then one guy came on the show and actually gave us a snippet of an Easy E track from '87, and uh, we played it. I forget what it was called, but it, it, it it's from that NWA and the Posse era. You, it has that sound to it, so it's good to know that okay, there's potentially more music out there. I forgot yeah, to hey. ask it, and what kind of music they got in the vault that they ain't released. Uh, so yeah. if we bring them on uh, in the future, which I hope we do, I'd love to ask them that as well. Because um, I imagine they got a ton of music. Yeah, Snoop and Lynch were just hanging out, man. So who knows? We might, we might, we might hear that original Doggy Style sometime. I just saw a video yeah. with Snoop and Brother Lynch together, man. So who knows, man? Well, and I, shout out to the homie DJ Ready Red, man. Uh, if you're listening, uh, you know what I'm saying we we still want to hear that 1989 Ghetto Boys album that was never released. <laughs> that was shelved, uh, but that was during the lineup change of the uh, the Ghetto Boys. So I understand why it was shelved, but uh, uh, I, it needs to see the light of day. That type of stuff, man, is huge. I mean, it's highly we important it in hip hop. You know, we need it more than ever right now, too, man. You know what I mean? There's so much garbage out there, man. We we need that. We need that. Yeah, thing. I'd love to you know, check out right that now. stuff, man. Because I know it, at the time I would have bought it. You know what I'm saying? I was already buying rap tapes in, in third grade in like 86. You know what I'm saying? So I would have been buying that shit. So uh, yeah. hopefully, oh, hopefully I, some of these delight a day, man. Yeah, you know, you know I got all that old Ghetto Boys stuff, man. I sent you a copy of the old Ghetto Boys stuff. You know damn well I would have bought that back in the day. Or right now, I would have bought it if I saw it somewhere. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that needs to drop that, man. We need to. Oh, yeah, that. for sure. That stuff uh, needs to come out. But uh, tomorrow, I want everybody to tune in to the show. We got the homie Fred Stide from Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Then the homie Ex Only out of Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, make sure to tune in and again next week. Uh, you know, Cuckoo Cow is going to be on Monday. We got Stevie Ray, you know what I'm saying, a legendary wrestler. He's got his own podcast, Straight Shooting. He's going to be on Tuesday along with the cast of um, Let's Go out of uh, Brownsville. Then, uh, you know, Wednesday, multi platinum producer Odell beats by the pound medicine man. This guy's responsible for, you know, 75 million records sold along with, uh, you know, KLC, Moby Dick, of course, Master P, and all them. Um, Thursday, we got uh, Swifty McVay B12. Make sure you check that out. And then uh, Friday, we're going to top it off, man, with a bootleg uh, of the Dayton family. You know, T-Rock, uh, former uh, uh, Hypnotized Minds uh, uh, label mate, and um, the crew of uh, Shattered Dreams, uh, new film out of Flint, Michigan. So we're going to keep, uh, man, we're going to keep knocking these shows out. Again, I want to thank Cedric for coming on the show tonight. The dope interview, man. I want to thank you, Brandon, for uh, holding it down. Shout out to uh, Mac J. Um, oh. Everybody oh, tuning okay. in. Uh, yeah, man, we we got a lot of dope stuff out of this interview. I'm gonna go do my thing now. I'm gonna go chop some shit up and uh, get some stuff uh, out there and uh, get ready for tomorrow, man. Uh, and again, please, those of you that tune into this show. Uh, make sure you go listen to Detroit Unplugged Radio, and uh, check out uh, that show as well. It's got uh, it's got our homie uh, Caliber 007, um, and I forget who the other guests are, but uh, you know, them guys know how to do a good show over there. So I hats off to Detroit Unplugged. 
First Fam Radio, you know what I'm saying, everybody, uh, all our affiliates. We don't fuck with many podcasts, you know what I'm saying, uh, many other uh, rap shows, but uh, the ones that we do fuck with, we respect them for what they do. Uh, but there's uh, there's so many other ones out there that are just popping up and they're not really representing uh, the, the fucking music, you know what I'm saying, the way they should be. So shout out to those guys, you know what I'm saying. Shout out to you, Brandon. Keep doing what you're doing. Shout out to uh, Sin over there in France. You know, he's another guy. He's got a dope radio show over there. Um, you know, Sin's the sounds. All uh, southern uh, dope music over there. You know what I'm saying? He, he spins the shit in France. So, they got. I'm telling you, they got more love overseas for the music than a lot of people do here. You know what I'm saying? Um, so... Shout out to everybody overseas that's helping keeping our music alive when we're shitting all over it. Not us, but the majority of the American population. Um, with that being said, they're all fuck out of here, man. What's up, Brandon? Um, my I, I was just I was just giving Sinister a shout out, man. He's always showing love, man. He's one of one of our biggest fans here, man, and he. You know, he's part of the family too, man. That dude represents. He calls in, listens to every show, man. Always sharing the shows, sharing my group, Hell's Heavyweight. He, he's always represents that. So I just wanted to show him a little bit of love, man. That dude. Oh, yeah, and, that dude's huge. And his knowledge is out of this world, man. Like, I pride myself on knowing a lot about all, all different kinds of hip-hop. Sinister got me beat, man. That dude knows everything. Yeah, that dude. That dude is. Uh, that dude is definitely an encyclopedia. Uh, shout out. Uh, shout out to that to the homie Abdullah the Barber, not Abdullah the Butcher. Don't be confused with Abdullah the Butcher. This is Abdullah the Barber. He, uh, man, he's the one that suggested we have Cuckoo Cow on the show. He hit up uh, Mac J and myself um, on the Murder Master Music Show page, and he um, he actually he's from Milwaukee himself. He put us in contact with Cuckoo Cal, and we got him on the show Monday. Uh, so, uh, man, be looking out for that show, too. That's going to be a dope shout show. Shout out to Abdul man. the Butcher. Yeah, shout out to Abdul the Barber, Abdul the Butcher, all them Abdullahs. Uh, shout out to uh, all the listeners. You know, keep fucking with us. Keep sharing the links. You know what I'm saying? Let, you know, let people know about us. Let people know yeah, what we're doing. Fast. Let me shout out the Super Smash Brothers, man. They're always always sharing the links. They're, 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 they're the artists of the punk. Right, sir. man. Super yeah. Smash Brothers. And dudes, yeah, uh, real humble. Shout out to Scratch LDP and uh, D Payne, you know what I'm saying? Living Dead Productions. You know, UGS oh. for Life over there. Um, shout out to everybody that uh, we're fucking with, man. Everybody that's. Uh, you know, staying true to to what they're doing, we appreciate it. And like I said earlier, you know, what I'm saying um, uh, I want to build positive bridges and blow negative bridges the fuck up. Um, no time for no bullshit. In 2017, we all we all got to go out there and uh, make shit happen. That's why instead of doing one show a week or two shows a week, on rare occasions we would do three shows a week. Man, we're gonna try to do shows uh, as much as possible. I'm not saying we're going to do five every week, but, you know, once you get a streak going, you want to keep it going, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're going to keep trying to uh, bring you shows every night of the week. You know what I'm saying? Saturdays, you got Underground Saturday Night with Mag Chain and Velvet Rose. Sundays, you got the Church Reality, myself, you, Elaine, Skinny. Um, and then Monday through Friday, we got the Murder Master Music Show. Uh, Skinny Man on the Rant, that should be coming soon. That'll be debuting soon. Scratch is going to be dropping another Slaughter Hour soon. So uh, just keep going to UGSForLife.com. That's the central nervous system to the whole fucking thing. Uh, go there, you know, connect with us, and, uh, you know, just support what we're doing. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, we appreciate it. Thank you all. Let's get the fuck out of here.